Hello everyone, welcome to Respectful Dave. Today I'm going to play a game and I'm going to walk you through what I think every single move. So your job is to pause the video, think, what would I play in this position? Then unpause it, see what I played and say, well, maybe, maybe I should change this. And yeah. Okay, we found, we found the game against Mercury. So good luck, Mercury, pawn to d4. So we're, we're having the black pieces. We're going to play knight f6. We're in this opening stage of the game, which means that we have to castle as quickly as possible. If you don't know how many stages there are in the chess game, there are three. The opening, the middle game, and the end game. I'm going to play bishop e7. As I said, I'm going to tr I'm trying to castle as quickly as possible because that's what you should do in the opening. I'm going to play, play d6. And I'm going to make my pieces active. At the beginning of the game, all your pieces are in the in the first and second rank. Oh, well, in the seventh and eighth rank, if you're playing as the black pieces, of course. So you have to activate them. That's why we, we develop bishops and knights first. Um, so we can take the rooks after that. And the queen, in fact, it doesn't move too much. Because in case of the queen, the queen is very powerful. So wherever it is, it's probably going to be pretty active. It doesn't matter too much. As much as the other ones, at least. So that's why we're moving the bishops and the knights. That's why your coach and your chess teacher, or in this case, I'm telling you, um, because I'm your online chess teacher, right? <laughs> um, that's why I'm telling you to, to take out your knights and bishops first. Um, in this position, it's pretty close. What black is aiming for is slowly building up, developing the pieces from a little bit of a pass passive squares, if I'm co completely honest, and eventually breaking the center. But white se seems to have broken in the center first. And it seems a little bit premature because I don't think white is ready. I think white has had to castle before. So now I have moves like knight g4 attacking the pawn or knight fd7 attacking the pawn as well. Um, it might be also fine for 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 white, but I'm gonna play knight g4, which 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 seems a little bit um a little bit dynamic and risky, but I think it might work. Queen d4, which I did see, I thought I had h. Five, and for some reason I thought Bishop C five was a big threat, but now I'm realizing that it's a little bit not 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 a very good threat. Um, now I'm thinking F five, which does have um, White does have en passant, but I think that wouldn't be a good move because after E five, all of a sudden my Bishop is defending the Knight. The E pawn is is walking um up the up the board. And my bishop it will be able to activate itself in the future. So it's closer to, to activating my bishop, therefore activating my knight, therefore activating this rook, right? h3, which seems sensible. And now ampassant is no longer possible. The rules of ampassant, of course, is to, to move it right away. So if you didn't play ampassant, you, you lost your opportunity. That's the way it works. And I thought in this position, I had c5. Attacking the queen. Always look that force move. So... Chess by nature is a forced game, which means that you have to constantly look at forced moves. And what that means is that it's full of tactics. Yeah, tactics is very concrete chess. Tactics is move by move chess. So everything got very tactical for a second. C5, if H takes G4, of course, I'm going to take the queen. So the queen had to move. And now I move my knight back. I don't have any tactics anymore. Knight takes E5 doesn't work. To queen takes E5, I don't have any compensation. I just gave up a knight for a pawn. I don't want to do that. So... I had to do, do the other one, queen eight, uh, knight h6, sorry. And now I'm I'm in this position where I'm going to play a6 because knight b5 was a little bit annoying. It becomes a little bit positional once again. And what I mean with tactical and positional is that there are only two kinds of of chess game, sorry, in, in, in chess, of course. Tactical and positional. Tactical is when everything's very, very crazy. All the king, like your king's sa is safety is, 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 is vulnerable. So your king is unsafe or or your, the pieces are very active, both of them. And there's a lot of tension and there's a lot of contact. That's what we call a tactical position. Um, or I should say a tactical game once again, sorry. A, a positional game would be what we have now, which is slowly developing our pieces, having long-term plans, maybe having plans of four moves, five moves. Bishop d7 is my plan, for example, rook d8, rook fe8, knight f7. It's very slow. There's not too much tension. The only tension I see is my knight hitting on e5, my queen hitting the pawn on e5 as well. Um, it doesn't seem like there's too much contact, but um, that doesn't mean it's never going to be tactile, by the way. By nature, most positions will become, if not all of them will become tactical um, at some point because once again by nature chess is tactical 
And that's the reason why chess engines are so strong, by the way, because they see move by move and they, they calculate very well. They calculate raw moves variations one by one. And that's tactical chess. But that's 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 not possible for humans. Humans have to think in, in plans, a little bit more in narrative. I have to make this night better, so I'm going to I'm going to uh, relocate it, yeah. But engines just go variation through by variation, and that's that's not the way we 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 teach chess. That's a little bit more difficult. Okay, back to the position. So we play knight f7 for that same reason. I wanted to reroute my knight, maneuver my my knight. This knight one h6 is not doing much, so I'm constantly asking myself where is where are my pieces better, and my opponent avoided my idea of g5, which would have been a, a very interesting uh, idea. Um, or a very interesting move because it, it kicks this queen out. So I wanted to play that. My opponent avoided it. Um, and now I have to update myself. So once again, the position, this is a new position. What should I do? I'm going to play bishop c8, trying to double on the d file. I could have played knight h8 for, for knight g6, but actually my knight on f7 is not that bad. I, I, I don't, um, I don't think it's, it's that bad. Now a3 I don't like because it creates this weakness on b3. Hmm. Sorry. So what I'm going to play is I'm going to play Queen B6, tickling this pawn. So I'm I'm prodding. I'm 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 putting a stick, poking my opponent, and now my opponent has to do that. And guess what? Do you know H4? Do you remember this move? Now it created this weakness on G4, which I didn't think it was worth occupying before. But now that the Queen is on E3, then G4 will come with a tempi or tempo, however you want to call it. Um, and that might be advantageous for me. You never know. Now we found ourselves in this position. Um. I have many options. I have queen eight, knight a5, sorry, not queen a5, knight a5, which looks okay, actually. It looks like it, I'm winning a pawn. Um, because queen takes b3 might be there, might be might, might be a big threat. Um, so my opponent plays a, b4. I think, to be honest, my opponent could have played something like rook a b1 in this position. But b4 happened, and I think now I'm slightly better. Because I won a pawn. And um, my pieces seem to have good squares. So it's not that I, I won a pawn for nothing. It's, it's a pawn. I just realized I missed um, a check on f2. Which is a blunder for my side. We're going to look at it at the, after the game. But I could have taken an f2. Doesn't matter. I think I still have an advantage. Luckily. But definitely should have seen that. Definitely. My opponent jumped with the knight on g5. Which is attacking e6. So I have to be careful. Um, what I will do now is I will defend. Or one move. Now e6 is attacked attacked twice and defended twice by my bishop on c8 and by my rook on e8. I'm going to play h6, attacking this knight. This bishop attacked my knight as well. I'm saying knight lots of times, but that, <laughs> there are no other names for, for these pieces, right? Um, and what I'm trying to do is um, clarify the position because I'm up a pawn, so I want to trade many pieces. And if I trade many pieces, then I will be hopefully able to to win the game so what i will do is i'm going to try to trade pieces and hopefully after all those trades i'm going to be up a pawn and will win the game of course ideally right but uh, i wish it was always like that right um truth is that most of the time it's a little bit more complicated and as as we i'm speaking i'm talking about this the position got once again very very dynamic very tactical and i'm going to sacrifice the exchange so i sacrificed the rook for a knight which Generally, it's not a very good idea, but I have a very good reason, and the reason is that the king is very exposed now. So, for example, this king, you, you don't want that king there. You want your king a little bit safer. I'm going to play this bishop on d7, and I think, well, okay, the points is very relative. In this position, my opponent unfortunately lost on time, so good game, Mercury. What I was going to say is, in this position, this final position, we take a look at this bishop, and you think, well, David, a rook is five points, a bishop is three points. What are you doing? Well, that's, that's, okay, that's true, but pieces and the, the value of the pieces are very very relative and what i mean with that is it depends on the position there are exceptions to everything you should not be dogmatic you should be pragmatic dogmatic is following the rules all the time with no exception pragmatic is um adapting to the new situations and thinking well maybe the rule doesn't apply in this position so in chess you have to be pragmatic of course i defined that in a very in a very brief way of course it, the definitions could be a little bit more detailed but in a nutshell, you have to be pragmatic. So I'm adapt, adapt, adapting constantly to the positions in chess. And that's why I sacrificed this rook for a knight. So rook, five points, knight, three points, right? 
you're gonna say david your opponent has two rooks and you just have a rook and a bishop so you're losing two points but what am i gain gaining in exchange sorry what i'm gaining is i'm attacking the queen first of all so my opponent has to move the queen and on top of that my my opponent has to move the queen to the right square so if my opponent plays something like queen g3 or queen g6 that's going to lose to rook g4 pinning and and winning the queen eventually so my opponent has to be careful first of all second of all the king's safety from my opponent is very very vulnerable so my king the, my opponent's king sorry is very vulnerable so if my bishop gets to go to a light square my light square bishop by the way gets to a square like c6 which would happen in only two moves then watch out i mean that bishop might be uh worth less than a rook but if a bishop is on c6 and my opponent's rooks are doing nothing in the e-file both of them are, are just looking at this pawn defending it looks a little bit um, bad from from my opponent's perspective then i don't think that bishop is lower than a rook i think that bishop in this position and right now would be stronger than that than any rook please let me know if you have any questions about this game or about anything in chess in general i usually stream every morning and sometimes in the evening so check that out and thank you very much for watching have a nice day